Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add diving mechanics to your games in the Blender Game Engine. So a while ago I made a tutorial showing you how to add this realistic water by Martin Optus and how to add it into your games. Then I made a tutorial after many requests showing you how to add water mechanics like swimming. So for example here, if I walk into the water, I duck down after I reach a certain depth. Now, when I released that tutorial, I got lots of requests asking for a diving tutorial. So I thought, why not? And so now if I press Z to dive, uh, I have a filter applied to my camera, which makes everything really blurry. And then I can swim under the water like this. And if I press Z again, I duck back up and the vision is normal again. So that's what we're going to be learning how to do in this tutorial. So yeah. Without further ado, let's get started. So to be able to do this tutorial, what you're going to need is the swim.blend from the water mechanics tutorial, which I did a while ago. If you haven't done that tutorial yet, you can either do it or there'll be a download link in the description of the starting.blend if you want to go ahead and get that instead. But otherwise, make sure you have this .blend and then we'll be getting right on into it. So the first thing you have to do if you're not going to be using the stop blend and will be using your own file is you have to make sure your shading is set up to GLSL and your animation frame rate is at 60. And I'm going to make sure I have debug properties on. So make sure you have that switched on. Okay, so we should be good to go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is over here under text I'm going to create new text block and then in here I'm going to call this underwater vision dot py and then I'm going to press enter to assign the name basically if it's a script you don't need py but I like to put it in just in case so now the script we'll be putting in here is a depth of field script by Martin Optus as well so down in the description will be a download link for this script so basically what you want to do is get that script then you want to copy it and paste it in like so Okay, so paste it all in. Then you want to scroll all the way to the top here. There's some reading you can do if you want to. Martin Optus and some license stuff. And also some changes he has made. Basically what we need to do is go down the bottom here. And here we need to first of all change the near and far values. So if we go on our camera here, go to the camera settings, Currently the clipping is at 0.1 and 500. Over here it has 0.5 and 100. So I might make my clipping 0.5 here. And then I'll change this to 250 because we don't actually really need 500. Then over here in the script I'm going to also change it to 250. Okay, so that first part is done. Then I'll just select my player again and scroll down in the script here. The samples we want to turn up pretty high, so maybe four for each one, even just five. Again, if your computer doesn't run this too well, maybe you want to turn them down, but definitely don't turn it down past three because it looks pretty horrid after that. So the next thing we want to do is over here, this manual depth of field, we want to change this to true. Okay? Manual depth of field is equal to true. All these settings here are fine. We don't need to change those. Vignetting, we also want on true. We might turn this up to 1.8. If you do some experimenting, you can see exactly what these do. Vignetting basically is darkening around the sides of the screen. So this fade, I might turn up so there's a little bit more of it if that's how that works. And then autofocus here, we can leave on false. We don't want it to focus, otherwise uh, stuff won't be blurry in the water. Some of it will be in focus and then, yeah, won't be blurry. Also down here, what we need to change, if I make this text editor window bigger, is this maximum blur. Now, basically, if you're setting this up fairly high, uh, you could probably go around five if you're gonna go higher than 5 with these values, then you can go higher with 5 with this value. Currently with 5 and 4, I don't really want to go past 4 with my maximum blur. So moving on, what we're going to do is, I'm going to make this window bigger again, 
and then I'm going to scroll down here and we don't need to change anything except fringe here which is chromatic aberration which will be a lot of under the water so I'm going to turn this up to 2.3 even uh, so quite a high value and the rest we can just leave so I think that was about it that's everything we need to change I'm going to select my camera and I'm going to turn my camera off here and then over here what I'm going to do is add a filter 2D in fact add two filter 2Ds then over here add a custom filter and this is going to be if I scroll in a bit so you guys can see this is going to be on pass 1 and this is going to remove the filter on pass 1 as well so they have to be the same to work and then this one I'm going to call enable and this one I'll call disable just because that's what they do now here I'll choose underwater vision because this is the 2D filter we want to apply so we'll minimize both of those and we'll make this text editor window a little smaller okay so now we can go back to our 3D viewport here and then what I want to do is press numpad 1 to go into front view or side view in this case so make sure the head is selected and move it up a little bit and basically what we have right now is we have one animation frame 0 to frame 30 and that's just him ducking down when he reaches the water or starts swimming now basically what we want if we want him diving is we want the camera to go down underneath the normal floor level so he can be under the water so to do that what we're gonna do is add an animation from frame 30 all the way to frame 60 so what I'm gonna do is go over to frame 60 like that scroll out a bit and drag down here so we want to drag this down just about there don't leave it just at the surface because that means the player might be able to look out of the water and if they look out of the water with blurry vision it will sort of seem strange so make sure it is under the water like that and then what we're gonna do is press I and insert location and so now if we go from frame 30 all the way to frame 60 you see he dives under the water then what we're gonna do is under the head here we're gonna add an action We'll minimize this one right here which is called swim this one here is going to be called dive and it's also going to be the head action make sure you turn off continue and then here it's going to start from frame 30 and it's going to end at frame 60 okay so do that then minimize it once you have all those settings in then we'll also add another one this one will be called up as in coming up out of the water the opposite to dive uh, we'll turn off continue as well and then here choose head action and there'll be a start frame of 60 and a end frame of 30 like that okay also here we'll turn up the priority to 2 then we'll minimize that once we're done and yep I think that is about it then we'll select our player here or our player movement make this window a little bigger and currently he has two properties player and swim and we need three properties so what I'm going to do here is add three properties one two three and then here the first one is going to be dive and that will be a boolean so true or false this one here will be timer so that will be an integer and this one here will be filter so as in if we've applied the filter or not so that means it will also be boolean then in here we need to select the eye for all three of those like that and yeah so basically you might be wondering why we have filter and dive and why we have a timer and the answer to that is basically if we look in our view here and we go over our animation on frame 30 to frame 60 if we look at our camera here on frame 30 he isn't under the water yet and even on frame 40 he's still not under the water yet so we can't technically if we want it to be realistic we can't apply the filter until most of the camera's view is under the water so that will be around about on frame 45 so only around frame 45 is the majority of the view under the water and only then can we apply the filter the same goes for when we get out of the water 
uh, we don't want the filter to be turned off instantly because that means from frame 60 when he's still under the water the filter will be turned off everything will be crystal clear for a short amount of time now basically for this tutorial I tried to keep it logic brick based, but basically if you can see all these logic bricks here and you were to copy and paste them again underneath, uh, that's basically how much logic would be needed to try and get this working. So because it's so complex, I thought I'd just simplify it down and write a simple Python script to allow us to manipulate the diving. Okay, and this isn't going to be very complex. It's basically only going to be activating properties and also activating the action here and activating the camera's filters. And basically what this will do is all the logic bricks we would have had to put that we haven't yet, we can compress down into one Python controller instead. Again, if you also want to, you can convert the rest here into another Python controller as well. But again, that's up to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to add a Python controller. So what we're going to do is, first of all, under the feet, we're going to add a keyboard. And this is going to be our diving key, so I'm just going to call this Z, and the key will be Z. Here I'll join this in to my end in the Python controller. Then on this side, I'm going to join up the up, and I'll join up the dive action. Okay both of those. Then also what I want to do is in my 3D viewport hold down shift select the camera and then from my Python controller I want to join it up to filter 2D enable and filter 2D disable. Okay so then over here I'm gonna make this window bigger so the first thing I'm gonna do is over here under text I'm gonna click create new text block this will give me a new script and then in here I'm going to type in dive.py and then I'm going to press enter and over here in line one I'm going to type in pound or hashtag and here I'm going to describe what my script does so this controls the filters or two 2D filters for the camera while diving Okay, so that's just a basic description. Then I'm going to press enter to go to the next line, and in here we're going to type in import BGE, so import the module Blender Game Engine. Then we'll press enter and press enter again. Now at line 4 I'm going to type in CONT, this is a variable, and I'm going to press space is equal to, and then space, and here I'll assign what my variable is equal to. So from BGE I'm going to type a dot, to get something from it and from BGE I want to get the logic from the logic I'm going to type another dot and what I want to do is get and then current with a capital C and then controller with a capital C controller and then two brackets at the end one opening and one closing so here BGE dot logic dot get current controller making sure that the get here is a lowercase g then I'm going to press enter, go to the next line, and on line 5 I'm going to type in scene, and then space is equal to, space again, and then here I'm going to type in BGE to get something from the module Blender Game Engine, then logic, and then dot get, current, and then scene instead of controller, and then two brackets beside that as well. These brackets are very important, basically they mean we can use the functions within the current controller. And here we can use the functions within current scene. And so now what I'm going to do is make a small shortcut and that is to type in OWN and then space is equal to and then space CONT, so I'm getting something from the CONT variable and then dot to get something from it and from my CONT variable I want to get the owner so owner basically doing this means I can type in own instead of CONT dot owner all the time okay so then enter and enter again and that is just the basic setup okay so now what we can do is import in our variables so what we want to do if we select our player here we need to import in these properties so what I'm going to do is click on my script and I'm going to do another hashtag or pound symbol and then I'm going to type in the properties for the player. 
So the properties for the player. And this again, this pound symbol, oh, this hashtag symbol, uh, just means we're making a note. So this is sort of like annotating the script, telling you if you want to read it again after a long time, telling you what each piece does. So then after that, we'll press enter. And in here, what we're going to do is type in dive, and then it's equal to, making sure you put a space in between each one, and dive is equal to own, so c-o-n-t dot owner, and then we're going to do a square bracket, which you always do when calling an object, and in here we'll do a quotation mark, so own square bracket, um, we'll make this window bigger, own square bracket quotation mark and then I'm going to type in the first property which is dive so own square bracket quotation mark dive quotation mark and then closing square bracket okay so like that that's the first property done now we need to do the same for timer and for filter so to make this easier on yourself what you can do is select all of it press control C to copy and then go to the end press enter to make a line 10 press control V to paste and then in here we'll change the name to the next one which is timer so delete this type in timer and in here we need to change dive to timer as well now we've already copied it we can press enter to go to the next line and in here what we're gonna do is press control V to paste again but this time we will call this filter and in here we can call this filter as well now again, these names don't have to be exact. You could call this banana if you wanted to and assign that to filter instead. Okay, so these are completely random. I just thought it might be helpful uh, to call this what this is so we don't get confused. Okay, so those are those three properties done. Then what I'm gonna do is do press enter twice and do another hashtag and this is gonna be the diving key. So the key that the player presses to dive. So here I'm going to press enter and I'm going to do the diving key, which in this case is called Z here. So to do this, what I'm going to do is type in Z key. Again, I could call this anything I want to do. I could call this dive key. What I can't do is call it filter, timer, or dive. I can't call it any of those because these are already taken in the script. So Z key is different, so that's okay. Then I'm going to press space is equal to, and then C O N T dot sensors. So from my controller module, I want to get the sensors connected to it, and then in here another square bracket, quotation mark, and the name. The name here is just Z. So we'll do Z, closing quotation mark, closing square bracket, enter enter again. Then what I'm going to do is I need to import in my actuators which are on this side. So I'll do another hashtag and just type in imports in actuators. Then I'm going to press enter to go to line 17 and here I'm going to make my variable which calls in the actuators. So we need to call in filter, disable, swim, dive and up. So in here what I'm going to do is type in enable and then I'm going to press space is equal to space again and then I'm going to type in c-o-n-t and then dot and instead of sensors I want to get the actuators so here I'm going to type in actuators and then a square bracket quotation mark and whatever this one's called so enable okay enable and then quotation mark and closing square bracket now what you can't do with these names is you can't do enable and then space and then filter you have to make sure it's all one word otherwise this will sort of confuse the Python console okay so if you want to have a space what you can do is do an underscore like that and then just type in filter after that because that makes it all one word as well okay so I'm just gonna have it as enable then once I've done that I can select all that press control C to copy Make a new line, control V to paste, and in here this will be a dis disable, like that. And in here, we'll replace this with disable. Okay, next one, control V to paste. So we've done those two. Now we need swim, dive, and up. So I might do swim first. Select this, type in swim. In here, I have to type in swim as well. 
next line and here this one's going to be dive except we already have dive as you can tell up here so what I'm going to do is actually type in anim with a capital A and then an underscore and then I'm going to type in dive so animation dive and then in here instead of enable I'm going to call for dive okay and then I'm going to press enter and then I'll do anim for animation underscore and then up and then space equal to space cont dot actuators uh, square bracket quotation mark and then up oh up now these names have to be spelt exactly the same as they are in here so if in here it has capitals you have to have capitals in your script now this enum here you don't need again it's just another thing for me to make this different from just dive so now we have all our actuators we have our diving key and we have our properties for the player now one more thing we need is the name for the player now basically what we need is the name for the player within the scenes objects and this is why we imported the scene get current scene so I'm gonna just type in gets name of player and then we'll press enter and in here I'm gonna type in self and then is equal to scene dot objects so get something from scene called objects then I'm going to do a square bracket to call something and in here what I'm going to do is type in own as in the controller owner and then I'm going to type a dot to get something from that and what we're going to get from that is the name and then do a closing square bracket so basically in here what this will do is it will assign self to whatever the controllers name is then we're going to press enter and press enter again now if you're wondering why we need the name, it is just to be able to assign these properties different values, okay? So then what we're going to do on line 26 is we're going to type in our first if statement. So before we do that, we're going to add a small description and this is going to be what it does. So the first thing what we want to do is dive into water, okay? Then I'm going to press enter and type in if Z key, so if our Z key, and then dot positive for it being pressed, and then we'll do a space and a and for another criteria. Now what we also want to happen when we press Z, we want to check if our dive property is equal to false, so he hasn't dived down yet. So here we're going to type in dive, like we have up here, but because it's a property, and its own dive, we can just do a space and then two equal signs to check what it is, and then false with a capital F, and then and again, because we need another criteria, believe it or not, and the next criteria is going to be that our timer isn't set to anything, so, and timer is equal to zero, oh, is equal to zero, there we go, and so we have to make sure our button is pressed, dive is equal to false, our time is equal to zero. And then what we also need to do is make sure filter is set to false. So and filter is equal to false. Now here what I also have to do is make sure there's two equal signs, not just one. Two equal signs means you're checking a value, one equal sign means you're assigning it. And then one more thing we need to check is to make sure that the player is actually swimming before they dive. So in here what I'm going to do is add another property. So I'm going to press enter, type in swim is equal to own square bracket quotation mark swim because we have our own property here called swim and then a closing quotation mark closing square bracket. So now we have that property as well and we're going to add it to the end of this as well. So and swim is equal to true. So a player is swimming, but no filter has been applied. The time is equal to zero, so he's not diving down currently, and diving is set to false. Then what we want to do when we're finished with our if statements, we want to type in a colon. This is basically the same as typing in then. So make sure you put a colon in, then press enter, and we'll have an indentation like this. 
And then what we're going to do is type in here what we want it to do. And basically what we want to do is get the self here. So type in self and then a square bracket and a quotation mark and we want to assign dive to true. So in here I'm going to type in dive because that's a property name here. Then I'm going to do a closing quotation mark, closing square bracket. So we want to get the property dive from self which is our own object and then a space is equal to and space and true. Now you'll notice I only did one equals and that is because I'm not checking the value, I'm assigning it to true. So here it's false and then if all this criteria is valid then down here it will set dive to true. Okay, then I'm going to press enter and enter again, press delete four times to bring it exactly to the start and then I'm going to do my next if statement which is if and we'll check for this property here we just changed so if dive is equal to true and then a space and and to add another criteria what we also want to check is that filter is false so and filter is equal to false making sure you're using two equal signs and then also what we want to do is check that the timer is less than a number so and timer and then we'll do less than and we'll just make our number say 30 so and the timer is less than 30 so the number here the integer we need that to be below 30 for this criteria to be true so that's all we need so then we can do a colon like that just two dots and then we'll press enter to go to our criteria we're going to type in own a square bracket quotation mark timer and then the closing quotation mark square bracket then I'm going to do a space and a plus and then is equal to and then a space again and here I'm going to type in one so this is adding to the own property of timer it's going to add one then I'm going to add my next criteria so enter enter again one two three four back to the start and here I'm going to type in if and then space filter is equal to false so if filter is still equal to false and timer is equal to and now we need a number from when we want to turn on our 2D filter so what we need to do is go over to our 3D viewport select our head here play along the animation so frame 40 is still above and frame 45 is just underneath so frame 45 or frame 46 I think I'll say frame 45 so what that is from frame 30 is 15 exactly which is perfect so halfway so in here what I'm going to do if filter is equal to false and timer is equal to 15 although if we look at it here move it up one that is properly under so maybe I'll make it 46 which means that it's 16 instead of 15 for going into the water so our timer is equal to 16 then I'm going to do a colon press enter and what we want to do here is turn on our property filter and then also turn on the 2d filter so in here we're going to type in self again to call in our own or our own name and then from that we want to assign our property and we'll select our player again so we can see our properties and we want to assign oh, filter and we want, want to assign that to true okay so we'll turn filter to true then enter to go to the next line and what we also want to do on top of that is type in self and then square bracket quotation mark timer and then closing quotation mark square bracket is equal to zero so we reset timer once it reaches 16 and our player is diving down and then enter again and here we'll activate uh, enable actuator so in here I'm going to type in cont dot activate so controller and then activate from the controller and then in brackets and now we put the name so enable so in here I'm going to type in enable cont dot activate enable and then a closing round bracket just like that also what we need to do 
when we press Z to dive down. Over here, we need to start playing the animation. So I'm going to press Enter. And in here, I'm going to type in C-O-N-T dot activate. And then a round bracket. And in here, we want to activate our diving down action. So animation dive. Anim and then underscore dive. OK, so just like we've typed it in here in a closing round bracket. Now something weird I've noticed is um, we've added swim in here as an actuator which is not actually connected. It is for swimming. So we don't actually need that. So I'm not quite sure why I added that in. We can go ahead and delete that. Now what we're going to do is select all of it. Don't select the description and then press Control C to copy. And then we're done. So press Enter. One, two, three, four. Get rid of all the space or indentation enter again, then a hashtag, and then here we'll type in a description. So this is come out of water. So this is what our player does. Then I'm going to press enter, press control V to paste. And so now we have two duplicates. Also what you can do is go to edit and copy and then edit and paste if that works for you as well. Then what we're going to do is Z key positive and dive here. We need to change this value to true instead. So this is basically going to be the opposite to this. We want timer to be equal to zero. We want filter to be true, like that. And swim will obviously still be true. Then we want to change this to activate it to false instead. And we want to activate animation, not animation dive. We want to activate animation up. So delete dive like that and type in up. Then over here, dive is equal to true. We'll change dive is equal to false because we've just switched it up here. Then also the filter will still be on true because we haven't turned that off. So type in true like that. And timer will be less than 30. That's all fine. Then down here, if filter is equal to false, which it won't be, it will still be equal to true. So we'll type in true. And then now's the tricky part where and timer is equal to 16. Now that's correct for when we dive in the water, so from frame 30 to frame 46, I think it was. But when we're coming out of the water, it's playing the animation from the opposite way. So from frame 60 all the way down. It's not going to be 16 because that would be frame 44 and then our player is already above the water but still has the filter applied. So basically what we need to do is do 16 minus 30 because that's our full animation. And we'll come out at 14 which is all the way over here at frame 46 as well because we're going backwards here. Okay, so basically we need to change this to 14, oh, 14 instead of 16. And also, if you notice, 14 plus 16 equals 30, which is our whole animation. Here, I'm going to change this to false instead. And here, I'm going to activate disable instead. So disable, there we go. So now we'll go over here, minimize this and we'll choose our dive.py. Now the reason we need it to constantly operate is so it can constantly add one to our timer. So here we're going to add an always sensor, set it to true so it's constantly going and join this up to the Python controller as well. Okay so I think that is all we need. I'll minimize that and minimize this and I think, yep, that is about it. So we'll make our window bigger here and scroll out of it. Then I'm going to go to texture view, press numpad zero, and it's under the floor, which is weird, but basically just make your view at frame zero. So make sure you're at frame zero. Then press P, and we'll have our normal view with our properties in the left hand corner. So we'll go over to our water here which looks pretty nice and you can see it's got a nice moving texture on it then we'll go down, we'll turn swim to true for diving down to swim then we'll press Z to duck down and our vision's gone all blurry and dark now one more thing I did show you was some blue hue that was under the water so to do that what we're going to quickly do is press shift A 
add a plane, move it up a bit, and then press SY to scale it on the Y axis and press SX to make it fairly large. Now one more thing I remembered before we continue is this water here by default you won't be able to see anything underneath I just remembered so we have to go over to the material tab here scroll down and make sure you've turned off back facing so you can see underneath as well as on top you don't have to do this if you're just using swimming but if you're using diving turn this off okay so back to this here this is called plane 002 I'm just gonna turn it down to or we'll just call it foam and then press SX and then here I'll give it a new material no specular I'll give it a blue color so something like that and then turn off back facing turn on transparency scroll down no alpha give it a new texture image or movie uh, UV and we want alpha on turn color off and basically I'll leave a link in the description for a alpha texture but basically what this is is this is just a fog texture like this so just a fog or a smoke texture and so once you've opened it up you want to select this press tab U and unwrap so it adds it and if that is too strong for you first of all what we're going to do is go to the UV image editor press tab in this window and select it in this window then scale it so you have most of the texture in okay like that and if that's too sort of harsh for you go in the texture settings and turn down the alpha okay so something like that is fine for me again might want to turn it up a little bit and now we'll press S to scale make it fairly large okay so maybe something like that then SX scale it on the X axis and then I'm gonna press RY 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis and then what I'm gonna do is bring it down under the water just so if some's poking out over top doesn't quite matter just yet because we'll be toggling the visibility of it and making sure it's only visible when you're in the water okay so somehow that is fine then I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate and GY move it over here then with this one selected I'm gonna press shift D GY make another copy over here then select all three and shift D GX shift D GX do that again you don't want them too close to the shoreline but uh, yeah somehow that is fine then I'm gonna press S Z to scale it on the Z axes uh, just so it fits in a bit better and then I'll select all of these maybe not even the starting ones so just the bigger ones then shift D G X move them over here then also for these bigger ones oh, we'll select all of those and select these ones here and then for the main sort of deep water section I'm gonna press shift D and then RZ90 so rotate it 90 degrees now it will push it out into this shoreline which you might like you might not like so you can press SX to scale it on the X axis and we'll just drag it in the corner there and then SY to sort of scale it out like that okay so now we sort of have like grid boxes of blue hue everywhere and you'll notice there's a big gap here so we can select all our pieces and move them across and yeah I think that is about it that's how I did most of it one more thing we have to do is select all our hues so if we go back to texture mode and I select all of my planes that I just made so these ones here so select all of those planes then what we're going to do is select one of them in the middle and press ctrl J to join so now it's one big mesh and here I'm going to call this uh, water foam or water color or whatever then in the physics make it no collision and in this side add two visibility actuators this one we'll call it visible and this one we'll call 
invis for invisible and turn off visible in invis and then hold down shift and select the player and then what we want to do is scroll out and make this window bigger and we want to join this Python controller we want to join in the visible and the invis so those two then quickly we have to tweak our script so here go to text editor go back to our script we need some more actuators so I'm going to press enter call this one visible is equal to cont actuators and then visible that's exactly how I spelt it if you look down the bottom here visible and visible and then the next one is invis is equal to cont dot actuators and then invis and then there we go so when the filter is turned on we want these to be visible so down here when filter is turned on filter is enabled we want to also type in cont dot activate and then in brackets visible and then down here when we turn the filter off we'll do a new line cont dot activate invis and then do that and so now if we press numpad zero and press p oh you can see there are some spare pieces which we obviously didn't connect so what we're gonna have to do is oh I can already see them look there's one right there which we didn't connect one right there we didn't connect and this one right here no we did connect that one there was this middle one as well we didn't connect okay so select the overall one here control J and so now those spare pieces will have the same logic applied here okay so hopefully that is it so now press numpad zero press P there you go can't see anything and we'll go in our water still can't see anything if I dive there we go and look look at that we have all our blue hue or blue almost like filthy particle stuff in the water also what you do is obviously underneath you would have a ground texture and you would properly like model out um, maybe some underwater plants and a proper underwater texture here for the ground make sure you have again this set to no collision otherwise you're gonna have problems with your player movement but yeah apart from that that was about it again if you're having troubles with this not working go over here choose toggle system control and in here it will tell you what you've done wrong so there we go that was a long tutorial hope you guys enjoyed it if you did be sure to like comment and share and make sure you subscribe for more content as well if your one didn't work post a comment below and i'll try to help you guys out otherwise there'll be a working copy down in the description as well but apart from that yeah again hope you enjoyed the tutorial have an awesome week and i'll see you guys in the next video